Hello my lovelies and welcome to my channel. So this series is Book Reading to Sleep, a relaxing series. So this episode is um, A Country Escape, author Katie Ford. I hope you enjoy. Katie Ford, A Country Escape. Chapter 1 The farm gate clanged shut behind her as Franz steered her little car up the steep track. Now she and Izzy had found Hilltop Farm for certain. The name was written, not very clearly, on the post box. She felt a mixture of excitement and nervousness. This was either going to be a wonderful adventure or humiliating mistake. She decided not to mention her feelings to her best friend. Izzy probably guessed how she felt already. I always wanted to be a farmer when I was a little girl, Fran said instead. Izzy, who just got back in the car, having helped deal with the gate, seemed surprised. Really? I never knew that. And we've been friends for years. I thought you'd always wanted to run your own restaurant. That came later. I'd forgotten myself, said Fran. Mum reminded me at Christmas. Do your parents think you're mad to do this? Yep. But they've been supportive. My stepdad thinks I'll be back with them before the end of the month. But I'm not in it for the long haul, she paused. Which may only be a year if I don't make it. Come on, said Izzy. Let's go and find this farmhouse. You might inherit. It's not just a farmhouse, remember. It's the whole darn farm. Fran rounded a steep corner and tried to push her nerves to the back of her mind. Now she was finally here, she realised no sane person would leave their comfortable life in London and move to a farm in Gloucestershire that they might not even inherit. No sane person. Obviously, but maybe someone like her, whose normal life had stalled rather and who relished a challenge. A couple of minutes later they arrived, having bumped their way to the top, avoiding as many potholes as they could. I'm not sure a car is the right vehicle for this truck, Izzy said. Ignoring her friend, Fran got out of the car. But look at the view. The farmhouse was on a plateau at the top of a hill that overlooked hills and wooden valleys, wooded valleys. Beyond them lay the Severn a silver snake in the far distance and beyond the river was Wales. I think I remember this landscape, Fran went on. We've come here once when I was a little girl. I'd forgotten all about it until we were discussing the farm over Christmas and Mum reminded me. Mum said we'd all been here when Dad was alive, but I must have been tiny. After all, I was only five when he died, but this feels faintly familiar. It is stunning, Izzy agreed. Come on, said Fran. Let's look at the house while it's all light. It will be dark by about four. So we'll need to turn the lecky on. I've got a torch, she paused. January's probably not a good time to move on to a farm, Izzy laughed. It is what it is. Let's get in. After failing to open the door, they went round the back. I don't think people use front doors in the country, said Fran, as they made their way round the building. Here we are. She fitted the key into the lock and turned. Seconds later, they were in. Wow, it's dark, said Izzy. Hang on, I think I found the fuse box. I'll just get my torch out. There, we have light. They were in a fairly big farmhouse kitchen. The friends looked around in silence for a few seconds, taking it all in. An open fire, said Izzy excitedly. How lovely to have an open fire in a kitchen. As long as it's not all I have to cook on, agreed Fran, looking around. Although the central light was on, it wasn't very bright and created shadowed field. 
corners. Oh, look, she went on, relieved. There's a raven, probably a prototype. It's so ancient. I do hope it's not run on solid fuel. But you're a chef. You can cook anything, said Izzy, laughing at her friend. I'm fine with the cooking, Fran agreed, but I have no experience of lighting fires. Oh, phew. It seems to run on oil. And look, there's an electric cooker as well. You're a cunnery lover. Izzy seemed to find Fran's dismay over the cooking arrangements highly amusing. I'll be okay, said Fran, more to herself than Izzy. I'm here to farm, not cook, after all. And I really like all the freestanding cupboards and things. And the sink was a lovely view of... She lifted the net curtain and peered through the window. Ah, the farmyard. But it's lovely beyond that. Come on. Suddenly, she was more excited than dubious. Let's go and explore some more. The sitting room, which was at the front of the house, was a good size, and the window sill was covered in pl um, pot plants. Some had died, but the geranium seemed to have survived. There was a three-piece suite draped in crocheted blankets and a profusion of tables and whatnots covered in photographs. Fran picked up a photo, a woman and a cow or maybe a bull. There's a rusty house sweet. There's a rosette house sweet. Izzy joined her. They all seem to be of cows or bulls. There's nothing to tell you anything about the old lady who owned them except that she was really into cows, said Fran, putting down the photo she was holding. Oh, look at the fireplace. It's tiny. You'll need something else if you're going to warm this room up. I know, it's tiny. But look at the beam above it. I bet there's a wonderful original fireplace behind this. Little coal burning thing. I long to take a sledgehammer to it, I'd wait until you're sure you're staying put. But I understand what you mean, said Izzy, looking around. It's not exactly shabby chic, but I do like it. This room could re could actually have been two or maybe even three rooms. She looked up at the ceiling, which had large beams at intervals. It's old lady chic, that's what it is, Fran decided, and I like it too. Although I wish I could investigate the fireplace, I bet there's something amazing behind all this dirty stuff. An old bread oven or something to cook on. You said yourself you're here to farm, not cook, said Izzy. If you thought you were going to miss chefing, you should have stayed in London, cooking for the pub. No, said Fran determinedly. This time I'm going to work for myself and make my own decisions but I suppose you're right I can't knock the house around not even not if I haven't actually inherited it so tomorrow you're seeing your aunt cousin what is she I can't remember exactly how we're related but she's some sort of connection to my read dad I'm Amy's I suppose I'd call her Aunt Amy. I'm the only relation she could trace. She's been running only relations. She's been running Hilltop on her own since her husband died. Now she's gone into a care home. She thought she should try and leave it to one of her relations. I think she's got in touch with another one, but according to the solicitor, he'd never replied. Which is why you're here, said Izzy, who then paused. Shall we investigate the bedrooms? They may be damp and we've got to sleep in a couple of them tonight. Thank you so much for coming with me, said Fran, as they made their way up the stairs. This should all be a bit daunting on my own. I'm just sorry I can't stay longer. It's such an adventure, Izzy paused. Would you have preferred Alex to come with you? Fran shook her head. No way. One of the reasons we broke up was that he wasn't up for adventure. He seems very happy being an intern for his uncle in New York. Although going on the fact that there 
were supposedly very few straight men in Wyatt, New York's. I suspect he w has another motive, she sighed. No, I really don't miss him, apart from as a friend, sort of. Was she over Alex? Franz knew that Izzy was still concerned about this. But she definitely was. He was a kind of a uh, lovely man, but when it came down to it, too safe and a bit dull. They'd broken up a few weeks ago after the couple of, of after a couple of years together. Fran knew they'd been going through the motions for a while, but the catalyst had been his opportunity, challenge even. If Alex could have hacked the countryside, unlikely, he couldn't cope with the uncertainty. A straightforward inheritance might have been different, but probably not. Fran, on the other hand, although terrified, was very excited by it all. A few minutes later, Fran and Izzy were making up beds, helping themselves to soft old flannel sheets they found in the airing cupboard. Then they found hot water bottles and filled them up. Although they agreed they didn't think the house was damp. Then it was time for supper. So, said Izzy, when they'd eaten most of the moussaka that Fran had made and brought with her and heated up in the electric oven. You'll seeing Amy tomorrow. Yep, after my meeting with the lawyer, she said. In his letter, he's arranged for me to have a bit of money to run things with, but I don't expect it's very much, she sighed. It is quite daunting when I think about it. I know nothing about farming, and yet I'm here. I could have said no when I first heard from Amy's solicitor, but she paused. I wanted to challenge myself. See, if you can run the farm for a year and make it pay, Fran nodded. Of course, I don't have to look after the cows myself. There's a herdsman. Amy would never let her precious cows be looked after by an ignoramus, which is what I am. As far as farming is concerned. The cows were quite big, aren't they? Said Izzy. Are you afraid of cows? More to the point, are you? Fran swallowed. I really hope not, but actually I think I am. Izzy laughed. Let's finish the wine and then get on an early night. You have to be up with the lark tomorrow. Better set your alarm for six. Get used to your new life. Although Fran knew Izzy was joking, she also knew what she was and was, what she was was true. As for being afraid of cows, she'd just have to find out when she met them. The next morning, they were standing in the kitchen, shrouded in layers of woolen jumpers and clutching steaming mugs of tea. Fran's long bob had not been straightened that morning and her blue-grey eyes had no trace of makeup, nor were her freckles toned down with makeup. She felt she looked like a scruffy ten-year-old, but had more important things to think about than her appearance. Izzy was looking pretty natural as well. It's the lawyer first, then your Aunt Amy, Fran nodded. I'm not sure how long it will all take. Will you be okay here on your own? Izzy nodded. I'm going to sort out the pot plants and maybe do a bit of exploring. I might even move the furniture around a bit and clear out the odd cupboard. Would you mind? Not at all. I'm so grateful you're here. I wouldn't grudge you a bit of entertainment. In fact, I think you're going to have a better time than I am. In the words, in other words, Mrs. Flowers is a distant cousin. A couple of times removed, to Fran's relief, Mr. Addison, the solicitor, a kind, tired man in his fifties, finally summed up the complex relationship that involved different generations and marriages. What do you think I should call her when we meet? asked Fran. 
who was getting nervous at the thought of meeting a woman who, although very elderly now, had apparently been formidable in her time. She'll let you know, don't worry about that, said Mr. Addison. Now let's go through the finances a bit, Mrs. Flowers had arranged six months of care in her home. She has set up an account with a thousand pounds in it for your use. There is a bit more money, but I'd honestly prefer you didn't encroach on it. Although Mrs. Flowers is very well looked after and frail, she may need more than six months care, which is going to be expensive. But in an emergency, you can apply to me. And what about the wages for the herdsmen and other people who work for her? There are a couple of relief milk makers employed as and when they're needed and their wage are all arranged to for six months. But she wants me to stay for a year. What happens after the first six months? In July? He shrugged. I think she hopes the farm will be earning money by then. Fran noted this carefully choice of words. You mean it's not making money at the moment? Mr. Addison sighed. Mrs. Flowers has said, has been slowing down for a while. Things have been let slip. So I'm not taking on a going concern. There are, the things are in a bad way. I wouldn't say a bad way, just not a desperately profitable way. When she'd first heard about it, Fran had thought it was a romantic, dramatic idea to have been brought in to look after the family farm. But she was no longer quite so sure. Is that you being tactful, said Fran? You would tell me the truth, wouldn't you? Mr Addison's expression closed down. I have to act in my client's best interest. I'm sure you're going to do a good job, he stood up. Fran realised he'd explained everything to the best of his ability, but he obviously felt he could do no more. What happens if it turns out I'm afraid of cows? He shook his head and smiled. He obviously thought Fran was making a joke. I'm sure we don't need to worry about that. When Fran... When Fran arrived at the care home, she'd anticipated it taking her a while to explain why she had come. But no, everyone knew exactly who she was, and for the first time that day, she wondered if she was dressed right. When she got up, after a night disturbed by an uncomfy mattress and a strange noises, she'd just put on the clothes she'd worn the previous day, more concerned with getting down the drive finding the solicitor and then the care home, then how she looked. Now, she wondered, if leggings, boots and a tunic that re re revealed quite a lot of leg was acceptable. Still, it was very late to worry about it now. She was following a care worker down the carpeted corridor, her boots scuffing against the pile. The nurse stopped and opened a door. Mrs Flowers? It's your young relative. The room wasn't huge, but it was bright and sunny. There were pictures on the walls and the furniture would have fitted into the decor of the farmhouse. Fran went into the room, not sure what to say. Hello, aunt, cousin, Mrs Flowers. She paused. The old lady was sitting on a chair looking very neat and upright. Better make it Amy, dear, she said crisply. Otherwise, I might die before you decide what my name is. And sit down, do. Fran sat and inspected her companion. Her eyes were bright and blue and shone out from a pink, slightly weathered complexion. Her thin grey hair was twisted into a knot on top of her head. She wore a long tweed skirt and a neatly ironed white blouse with a lace collar. She seemed bright, cheerful and well cared for. 
She had obviously chosen her care home well. Hello, Amy. It's lovely to meet you finally, Fran said, sensing it was important that she appeared confident, even if she was anything but. The meeting with a solicitor had turned a year learning about farming and a bit of an adventure into a huge undertaking loaded with responsibility and concern. Amy nodded, possibly with approval. Well, dear, I'm very glad you came. I didn't want my farm to go to rack and ruin while I'm in here. But you realise I don't know very much about farming, don't you? Amy obviously wasn't the sort of person who appreciated how are you conversations. So Fran got on with what was on her mind. Yes. And please don't take offence, believe me, if there'd been anyone else I would have got in touch with you. But you are related. I'd have preferred one of my husband's relations. It was his farm, but although I tracked one down, they never replied to my letter. So you're all I could find, she paused. It was 18 when I married and I lived on the farm ever since until I came here. Goodness, Amy seemed to need to tell her story and Fran hoped she sounded encouraging. Amy nodded and carried on. The farm had been in his family for many generations. We never had children and it was a great sadness for us both to think it would all end with us. My husband died 20 years ago and I've been on my own since then. I've been worrying about who to pass it on to, on to all that time, Fran was touched. I can understand that. It's the herd, you see. They're dairy soft thorns and quite rare. The cows on the farm now, and I've known them all personally, are related to the original herd. That's very unusual. She gave a little smile. Cows can live to be quite old, you know. And if they're looked after, if I don't leave the farm to someone who'll carry on with it, it will have to be sold. The herd will go and all the unbroken pedigree will be lost. That would be a tragedy. So it's for the cows, the farm, and I tracked you down. And now you're here. Amy smiled as if she was a satisfactory conclusion. I do hope I don't let you down. Amy shook her head. You won't. I remember you as a little girl. You liked the cows. You liked their red and white colouring. This had obviously stuck in her memory. It's the herd that's important, she repeated. The bloodline. It must be kept going. Amy obviously felt extremely strong strongly about her cows even given old people's tendency to repeat themselves I see Fran offered a little prayer that she still liked the cows herself and you have Tig my herdsman I would never have left you my herd without someone to look after them you have to look after everything else the office work, feed, ordering looking after the building things like that so he can look after the cows. I've paid him six months in advance. He, so he won't leave. Fran wanted to ask why Amy hadn't just left all of her farm to Tig, but realised this was to do with bloodlines. Tig was not related to Amy, and she was. There was a bit of money to keep you going, but you have to turn... You have to run the farm for a year and then I'll decide whether you should inherit. Amy's expression emphasised what a massive reward she thought this was. So you will try, won't you, Francesca? No one ever called Fran Francesca, not even her mother. When she was cross, she realised she liked it. About the house, Amy interrupted her. I really don't care about the house. Do what you like with it. But don't let anything happen to the herd, Fran nodded, instantly thinking about the fireplace she could now investigate. Oh, and don't let that scoundrel who lives next door have anything to do with you. 
He's always wanted my farm and it's your job to make sure he doesn't get it. Vineyards indeed. Tell me, Fran began. But Amy had closed her eyes and had apparently gone to sleep. She does that, explained the nurse, who appeared in the doorway at that moment. Right as a button one minute, fast asleep the next. When is she likely to wake up? asked Fran, who felt she really should find out about the scandal neighbour as soon as possible. The nurse shook her head. Not for a while. You'd do better to come back tomorrow, or as soon as it's convenient. OK, said Fran. She got up from her seat. I'll come back. I haven't learned it nearly enough about things. She went to the door, stopped and addressed the nurse. But are you allowed to tell me? She's general. Well, isn't she? Oh, yes. She's very good for her age, I suppose. She's always led a healthy outdoor life. Never smoked, never drank alcohol. And nothing likely to happen with her within the six months. I can't see into the future, but she seems well enough at the moment. Although, with the elderly, you can never really be sure, she frowned slightly. She's got a tweak heart, but she's managing fine at the moment. That's good enough for me, Fran smiled. Thank you so much for looking after her. I'm looking forward to getting to know her better. The nurse returned the smile. She's a great favourite with us all here. By the time Fran got back to Hilltop Farm, it was early evening and nearly dark. She was freezing and cold and wanted to open the wine even though it was really only tea time. After her visit, she'd spent a little time investigating the town. Then she'd had got lost trying to get home. And so most of the day had melted away. She pulled up in front of the house and saw lights peeping out from behind the curtains, which made the house seem welcoming. As she collected her handbag from the back of the seat of the car, she realised how bright the stars were here, miles away from any light pollution. Minutes later, Fran was in the sitting room looking around. The room, which had been cluttered and a bit claustrophobic, was now far more sparsely furnished and every suitable surface supported a teacup with a flickering candle in it. It was welcoming and restful, just what Fran needed after her day. Wow, you've done some good stuff here and lit the fire and candles. Tea lights corrected Izzy, knowing what a fussy knickers you are about lighting. I put some in my bag. When I found all the teacups in their cupboard, I put them all together. Good day? It's gorgeous, so cosy and pretty. Daunting day, got lost coming home, but I'll tell you later. But can I knock the fireplace out? Although not now, obviously. You asked Aunt Amy, Izzy was surprised, not specifically, but she said I could do anything to the house as long as I looked after the cows. Fran collapsed in one of the armchairs, drawn up next to the fire and started tugging at the hills. Of a boot. I'm so tired. I think it was meeting people and having so much information fired at me. She looked around. It looks far better in here now. Thank you, she frowned. Oh, why did you keep that dreadful painting up? Because it hides a patch of wall that really needs redecorating. And if you do one bit, you'd have to do the whole lot. Fran nodded. Fair enough. Apart from that, we've made it look great. Well, I needed something to do and you gave me permission to play. Easy pause. Although the changes haven't been approved by everyone. What do you mean? Fran pulled off the other boot. Who else has seen them? You've had a caller, Mrs Brown. She's coming back tomorrow morning. She used to look after Aunt Amy a bit before she had to go into the home. 
She seems to know everything about the farm. She looked around with one eyebrow raised, obviously disapproving like mad. I reassured her that everything is still safe. I haven't burnt the nests off the tables and whatnots and all the other clutter. But she seemed a bit put out. What have you put all, where have you put all the stuff? There's a little room at the end of the house. It had quite a lot of things in it already, so I just stacked more bits on top. I don't think you'll need that room. It's quite a big house, really. Amazing. Is there wine? The extent of her potential inheritance wasn't a top priority just at that moment. Izzy nodded, very pleased with herself. There's wine and there's dinner. I asked your visitor how to light the range and she showed me. Then I put in the lasagna you bought. Sorry, said Fran. Lasagna is a bit like moussaka, but I wanted to bring food that was easy to heat up and didn't need saucepans. I can't believe you haven't brought your pans and things. I brought my knives, but I didn't want to bring anything I owned. I left a lot of my stuff in my parents' garage. Fran closed her eyes. I've got a lot to tell you, but not until I had something strong to drink. It's still tea time, really, is the objective. Fran shook her head. No, it's dark. Wine time. At least today it is. I'll get it. Do you want your dinner early too? Yes, please, mummy. Fran felt revived when she had eaten and was ready to elaborate on how she got on. I feel a bit confused. Both the solicitor and Amy. She asked me to call her that. Told me a lot, but left out a lot too. The solicitor said there's a thousand pounds for me to use, and although there is more money, it has to be kept for Amy's care. I know care homes can be expensive, said Izzy, but I don't want to worry about that for six months because Amy's paid for that long. She's thought it all out. And there's the herdsman who looks after the scary cows. She paid him too and his relief milkers. And if they're not scary, it should all be fine. But Fran knew their cheerfulness was a little false. She may not be able to do this after all. I really want this to work, she said. I've left my job and packed up my life to come here. And although I could go back, I'd always f wonder if I could have made a go of it. Very few people get chances like this. I can't waste the opportunity. It's my chance to make something of my life. Chapter 2 Fran woke early, aware that it was raining. Not a good beginning for her, first proper day as a farmer, but then she remembered that Mrs Brown was due to call, giving Fran the perfect excuse not to go out and meet the cows. She had to bake if she had a visitor, so no cows this morning. Is, said Fran, crunching toast. I've, I'll have to bake instead. Do you think Mrs Brown likes flapjack? How would I be able to tell? asked Izzy amused. I'll do flapjacks and shortbread, Fran decided. Then there's a choice, and I'm sure the herdsman would appreciate whichever one Mrs Brown refuses. Izzy had gone for a walk in spite of the rain, but promised to make sure she, would, she was back to help Fran entertain Mrs Brown, leaving Fran to prepare for their guest. As Fran mixed butter into flour and sugar, she looked out of the kitchen window to the farmyard beyond. It had a cobbled courtyard and was surrounded by buildings, outbuildings, but not, she realised. She peered through the groom and one that housed the cows. These buildings were too small for that. Although she knew the herd was not large, None of these buildings seemed to be in use, so the cows must be somewhere else. This was a bit disappointing. Fran had hoped she could observe them from the safety of the kitchen. However, 
It was potentially a pretty yard, and she could picture it with stone sinks filled with flowers, hanging baskets, and possibly some charming, though defunct farm implements decorating the walls. Then she laughed at herself and made Izzy laugh when she appeared some time later and Fran told her of the mad plans to civilise the yard. Like it's going, like it's ever going to be pretty. When am I going to have time to put in bedding plants and find old ploughs to hang on the walls? Well, you're probably not going to have time for ages, but you should do one day. But I saw your cows while I was walking. They're all in a fairly new building. I saw the cow herd feeding them. Oh, what's he like? Izzy frowned. I couldn't really tell, but he's not chatty, that's for sure. Fran's heart sank a bit. He's going to resent me terribly for not being Amy. I just know it. Give him a chance, said Izzy. He was a bit younger than I'd imagine. I could just about see him under his hat. Mrs Brown, although not old, seemed suspicious as she came in through the back door and into the kitchen. She was wearing a drover's coat and broomed hat, pulled down, pulled well down and big Wellington boots. It was an outfit Fran instantly envied for its protective qualities. Mrs Brown took off her boots immediately and was wearing a thick grey socks underneath. She appeared to be a woman who didn't give anything away until she wanted to. And although she'd divested herself of her boots right away, she was a bit reluctant to give Fran her dripping coat and hat. Really? Fran insisted. They're soaking. It is such terrible weather today. Let me hang these over the range so they can dry off a bit. Very well, said Mrs Brown and unbuttoned her coat and handed Fran her hat. Now, let's go through the sitting room, said Fran, trying to behave as a hostess, as if she hadn't arrived just two days before. Fran suspected Mrs Brown considered it too early in the day for a fire. Fran personally thought it added brightness to the January morning. Sit where it's warm, said Fran. And would you like tea or coffee? Once it was established that tea was the preferred beverage, Fran left Izzy to make polite conversation while she made it. Izzy did offer, but the thought of Izzy doing it made Fran feel a bit awkward, as if Izzy were a servant, not a friend. At last tea was poured and shortbread handed round. Oh, this is very nice, said Mrs Brown, surprised. I was a chef in London, explained Fran, and although my chefs don't bake, I started baking with my mother at home, and I still enjoy it. So not really a suitable person to take on a farm, then, said Mrs Brown. Not at all suitable, Fran agreed. It couldn't be denied, but I expect you know I was the only blood relation of Amy who could be traced, and I did come here as a little girl. Amy told me I like cows. She put the rose pattern cup back in the saucer. I'm determined to make a go of it, especially now I know how important it is that the farm carries on after Amy dies, she frowned. Although I'm not sure that wouldn't happen for years and years, Fran couldn't help wondering how on earth a care home could be paid for without the farm being sold. Mrs Brown seemed to read her mind and that care home won't be cheap. Amy has paid up front for six months, said Fran, hoping this information wasn't a secret. So with luck, I'll have got a grip on things by then. Mrs Brown looked doubtful. I'll take more than luck. It will take more than luck, and it won't be easy for you. You being a townie, but you've got a good, a very good herdsman. Oh? What do you know about him? Quite a lot. He's my son. Goodness me, said Fran, thinking that Mrs Brown really was a woman who kept things close to her chest. Amy thinks the world of him. The herdsman's mother went on. Fran took a sip of tea. I don't know her well, 
but I'm willing to bet she's a very good judge or character. Mrs. Brown relaxed just a little. She is. And you'll be around? I can ask your advice. Fran's life told her that people were more likely to be kind if you asked their advice. People like that. Not as much as I used to be for Amy. I made a point of it for her or she wouldn't have managed at all. But I've got my sister to think of and she's not local. Oh, maybe I'd better ask you everything I need to know now. Fran sounded and felt a bit desperate. Go on then. Although Mrs. Brown's expression was not encouraging, Fran felt fairly sure she'd know the answer to the question uppermost in her mind. Can you tell me about my neighbour? What is so wrong with him? Amy was just about to tell me when she fell asleep. Izzy refilled Mrs. Brown's cup and Fran preferred the shortbread. Mrs. Brown took a sip and a bite and then a breath. Well, it all goes back to his father. No, his grandfather. There was a frisson of excitement at the knowledge that good gossip was going to be shared. Amy's never told me in so many words, but I got the strong impression when she was talking about him that there was an understanding between her and old Mr Arlingham. Seeing Fran and Izzy looking confused, she explained, You know, romantically. Ah, said Fran, in the picture now. Anyway, it came to nothing, she paused for a dramatic effect, possibly enjoying the rapt attention of the two younger women. Now, I don't know what happened, but it was something to do with the land. Maybe she suspected that old Mr Arlingham only wanted her so he could get his hands on the farm. I don't know if you've seen it on the map, but Hilltop Farm cuts into the Parkhouse farmland that's owned by the Arlinghams. Like a thumbnail, I reckon, it's always irked the Arlinghams that they don't own all this bit of the valley. Fran refilled Mrs Brown's teacup, anxious lest this outpouring of very useful information should dry up. Mrs Brown accepted another bit of brown of shortbread and carried on. I do know that young Arlingham, Anthony, came to see Amy a couple of years ago. I happened to be here working in the kitchen. She let him in with a welcome but he went out again looking like thunder. She had her feathers ruffled too. She didn't go into details, but I gather he wanted to buy the farm. Fran bit her lip for a second before speaking. But really, she had no one to leave the farm to. Why didn't she want to sell it? She may need the money, after all, to keep her in the care home. It's what he wanted to do with the land that was so upsetting to her, Mrs Brown explained. And what was that? said Izzy. I don't know, said Mrs Brown. Could have been factory farming or raising birds for a shoot or maybe a place to ride motorbikes. Amy would never see her precious cow sold to make way for motorbikes. No, that would be awful, said Fran, although she wasn't quite as horrified as she thought she ought to be. Amy mentioned vineyards. Whatever the thing is, said Mrs Brown, this land had never been ploughed, not during the war, not ever. That makes it very special. Oh my goodness, said Izzy. This is incredibly rare. No wonder Amy doesn't want it used for anything else. That's an outrageous idea, she paused and then obviously felt obliged to explain her passion. I'm doing a PhD on land, on land conservation. There's less than 2% of this sort of land left in the country. It must be preserved at all costs. 
But I thought everyone had to dig for victory in the war, said Fran. These fields are too small to plough and too steep, said Mrs Brown proudly. That's what makes this farm unique. So don't you go having anything to do with Mr Anthony Arlingham. Not on any account. I won't, said Fran, feeling much more in the picture. Anyone who'd even consider, even for a moment, ploughing up fields that should never be ploughed, to turn them into motor tracks is beyond the pale, said Izzy passionately. It would be a discretion. That's the word, said Mrs Brown, satisfied. Then she got up. I'll leave my number in your case. You need any more information about things, but I expect you'll manage just fine. I hope so, said Fran, not convinced. That was very nice shortbread, I must say, said Mrs Brown. Oh, I'll wrap some, I'll wrap up the rest and you can take it with you, said Fran, running to the kitchen before Mrs Brown could decline the offer. She felt she needed to keep Mrs Brown on side. After Mrs Brown's outer garments and boots had been returned to her and she had been ushered out with as much gushing as Fran thought they could all cope with, Fran looked at Izzy. Let's put on our wellies and inspect the farm. I need to know what I'm facing. Although I know it's still raining. Are you feeling a bit overwhelmed? asked Izzy. Hmm. I'm determined to do it, but it is a big thing. It's massive thing, Izzy agreed. But if anyone can do it, you can. Fran handed Izzy her parka. Thanks, Iz. It would be a lot easier if you didn't have to go home tomorrow. But your faith in me makes it seem possible. Now pass me my boots. There's a love. As they went out of the back door, Izzy said, I don't expect this yard has been calf kids and wellies before. Had seen calf kids and wellies before. Fran looked at her feet. Maybe I'd better get some proper farmer boots. Not until those are worn out, said Izzy true i've only got that thousand pounds from amy to live on and run the farm apart from a bit of money of my own that's all there is they walked out of the small enclosed yard that fran had hardly furnished with flowers had already furnished with flowers and decorative items in her head Now she could probably inspect, properly inspect the outbuildings, they peered through the dirty windows. The buildings seemed in fairly good order, commented Izzy, but nothing's happening in them for years. Or, but nothing's happened in them for years. Fran tried the door and found it opened, absolutely full of stuff, she said after a few seconds. And I bet if I did guzzy up the farmyard, I'd find everything I want as a decorative item right here. What's that? asked Izzy, pointing to something that looked like a press of some kind. Do you think it's for cider? If it is, it explains why it hasn't been used for years, said Fran. The nurse in the care home told me Amy was a strict teetotaler. Look at those wonderful scales, said Izzy. This is fascinating. Let's not get sidetracked, said Fran. I really want to see Tig before he disappears off somewhere. Let's do that, said Izzy. This stuff will wait after all. They went through the guard they went through the gate out of the yard and into the short lane that led to the cow buyer. Fran looked for Tig, keen to introduce herself, but there was no one about, only the cows. We've missed him, said Fran. You might find him later, said Izzy. In the meantime, there are the special aristocratic cows. Aristocratic cows. Such a wonderful pedigree. Fran looked at them dubiously. They were in a large chilly barn and they were chewing and looking at her. They were very large and had horns. No prizes for guessing what they're thinking, said Fran. 
that we're two right old townies wearing really silly wellies. They're very handsome though, aren't they? said Izzy. I love the way the red and white mingle. Would you call that? Deadport. They're dairy southerns, said Fran. Amy told me. I must Google them when we get back in. See what I can find. You might, it might, that might be a bit difficult, said Izzy. There doesn't seem to be an internet connection at the farm. I, I tried when you were visiting your old lady. The thought of being without an internet connection gave Fran a nasty pang. Oh God, well, I'll have to sort that out. But let's carry on round. I think the rain is easing off a bit. Really, said Izzy, obviously not convinced. They had been walk they had walked for um hour and a half. They had walked for half an hour and were standing at the top of a field that swept down to a stream. Beyond the field was a row of trees, more trees and hill paths that and then the river and beyond that the mountains of Wales. I know I'm sounding boring now, said Izzy, but I think this is the most beautiful spot on earth. The view is great from the farmhouse, but up here it's even better. We've both said it a few times, and we're right, Fran agreed. It is beautiful, and the thought that someone is thinking of spoiling it, turning it into a scrambling cause for trail bikers or something, is terrible. A movement by the farmhouse caught her eye. Look, I think that must be Tig. Let's go back down and say hello. As they walked down the muddy track to the house and round the back to where the cows were kept, Fran felt nervous. It was terribly important that she got on with Tig. If he despised her for being a townie, and Fran felt it was inevitable that he would, this farming thing would n never work. She was dependent on him, just as Amy had been, although at least Amy had acknowledged the experience, she and Fran had nothing. If this farm fell apart, she could always get another job. Hello, said Fran, hoping fervently that she didn't sound like an over-enthusiastic Labrador greeting a friend. I'm Fran, Amy's, Mrs Flowers, um, relation, Tig nodded. He was younger that she'd imagine him well dressed up against the weather he wore a hat the same as his mother and with a wide brim a cracked old barbell jacket was done up closely and his waterproof trousers covered legs ended in muddy boots he looked the part I've just met your mother and I'm really pleased to meet you she offered her hand this is my friend Izzy, who's staying for a couple of days to help settle in. Now she was near, she noticed that he had very bright blue eyes, as if he spent a long time looking at the sky. Tig nodded. I'd love you to tell me all about the cows, said Fran. They're so pretty, so pretty. She knew this wasn't the word she was looking for but desperately wanted Tig to like her. No, she needed him, but although she had plenty of charm and confidence with people, she wasn't like anyone, he wasn't like anyone she'd ever met before. Unexpectedly, she saw the weather-beaten face move and the blue eyes crinkle at the corners and she realised he was smiling. He nodded. They are pretty. So, what do you know about what do you want to know about them? Izzy shivered beside her. They were both freezing to death in their towny clothes and Fran wished she knew the right questions. She smiled. What do you think is the most important thing about them? Tig inclined his head. This herd goes back a long way, longer than most herds. That's important. They give rich, good rich milk and they're good mothers. 
He went on to tell her about milk y yields, how much they ate and the different temperaments of individuals. As Fran stood there listening, her feet turning to ice, she realised he loved his cows. They heard with a passion. He didn't actually say as much as it was obvious in the way he looked at them, told them the names and personal characteristics, described how they were related and who their mothers and grandmothers were. None of them would suffer as much as an insect bite without Tig noticing and doing something about it. Fran asked a question she hoped was intelligent. Do you, we, they have large vet bills? Tig shook his head. Not if I can help it. Which didn't really answer Fran's question. I must go in now, said, she said. I need to make a phone call. I'll see you tomorrow. Tig nodded and turned back to the cows. It was hard saying goodbye to Izzy at the station the next day. She was going back to London to continue her studies. It was raining and, a, and quite cold and it made the parting seem so poignant somehow. Poignant somehow. Although they had a very positive conversation on the drive, Izzy saying that with Tig Fran could learn about it all slowly, get to know what he did and why. Fran realised this was true and that Amy would never have felt the farm in her hands if she felt Fran's ignorance was in any way a problem. But having Izzy there made it an adventure. Knowing she was going to be alone in a farm with no internet and only a landline as a method of communication was a bit daunting. Still, she'd found a whole bookcase full of old novels and Fran knew if things got too tough, a book was a wonderful place to escape to. And of course, I'll be down as often as I can, insisted Izzy, having given Fran an enormous hug. I love it down here, and now I know how unique the pasture is. I could even call it work. I won't be the only one of your friends who comes either. You'll be the weekend spot of choice. Hmm. Not sure I want a lot of townies coming down here expecting me to cook for them while they lie about looking at the view. I'm a working farmer, you know, Izzy laughed. You're also a chef and quite sociable. You'll need to get friendly with the locals or get your mates down here. Fran imagined her London friends in a rural, old-fashioned setting and decided she'd invited, invite them later when she brought the farmhouse up to date. I think I'll do a supper club, she said, as if that was a plan and not an idea that had suddenly popped into her head. I bet people would be curious to see Amy's house. If they can get up the lane, that is, said Izzy. But I suppose the locals all drive farm vehicles that can go anywhere and there's somewhere to park halfway up. I'm getting quite keen on the old, on the idea now. After another long hug, Fran left Izzy, got into her car and set off home. As she drove, she tried to think of the most important question to ask Amy when she next saw her. She wanted to make some notes before she went again, as if Amy was awake and she could get some information. Did the farm actually make money seem the most important one? And by the time Tig had had wages and the cattle had been fed, was there any left over? Preoccupied, preoccupied, Fran missed the turning to the farm and found herself driving up the hill and along a road and took her quite away from Hilltop Farm, confident that she'd be able to find her way back as long as she got home before dark. She allowed herself to carry on driving. She fancied a little local exploration, in spite of the rain. She might find a bit of coverage on her phone. The high hedges suddenly turned into beautiful stone walls and Fran realised she was driving past a very valuable property. Although it was raining harder now, she was very curious and wanted to see if a mansion would suddenly reveal itself. It didn't, but a gateway with a large pair of electric gates did. The name of the property, Park House Farm, was etched 
on a piece of stone. It all looked new and prosperous. Van decided to use the gateway to turn in and pulled into the side of the road to see if there was any coverage. She just opened the window so she'd hear any traffic before getting her phone out when a car sped up the road towards her. It shot past far too fast in Fran's opinion and obviously went through a puddle because water jetted in through her window and soaked her and the car. Fran shook herself like a dog and growled like one too. She then swore loudly and importantly at the driver who was probably miles away by now. She hadn't seen the car in detail but knew that it was large and flashy. She was certain he sh she'd glimpsed that the driver was male, belonged in the property with the Coltswort stone walls and equally certain she hated him. And by the time she'd got home and her dripping self inside, she was almost as certain that this was her neighbour, whom Amy hated so much and had warned her against. Righteous. Ignatian warmed her as much as her cu curiosity bath did. Cursory bath did. Installing a shower was a priority, she decided, just as soon as she knew if she could afford it. She made herself a hot chocolate and lit the fire, while, all while planning a hideous end for the driver of the car who wanted to turn Hilltop into a motorbike scrambling centre or whatever. Somehow she would make a fortune and buy his farm and turn it into grazing or rare cattle that would serve him right. She had just made herself a plate of pasta with chilli oil and garlic and was about to sit down in front of the fire with it when she heard a knock on the door. More significantly, significant, significantly it was the front door. She may be pretty much 100% towny, but by now she had confirmed no one used the front door in the country. She put her plate of pasta down and got up from the sofa. Should she open the door? Who would be calling at this time of night? Rather wishing she had a dog to protect her, she opened the door. There was a tall man wearing a rain-spattered barbell jacket and wellington boots. But although they were both items that Tig wore, they were totally unlike Tig's in the same way that this man and Tig were both male but totally unlike each other. Instinct told Fran who he was. It didn't make her like him all though. And no one really wanted to meet a kind of attractive man while wearing PJs and fluffy slippers, even if she was perfectly decent. Yes, she said. Ah, I've come to apologise for drenching you. My name is Tony Arlingham. <laughs>